Russia has world's most diverse nuclear arsenal, U.S. General. Russia poses a serious challenge to America's military dominance. Air Force General Antony Cotton, who heads the U.S. Strategic Command, said, Moscow already possesses a nuclear arsenal that exceeds Washington's and is actively modernizing it, he told the U.S. Senate's Armed Forces Committee in a prepared statement. Together with China, Russia is swiftly improving its position against the U.S. and its allies in multiple domains. The general warned, adding that the pace of these changes is increasing and is now much faster than that seen just a few years ago. He pointed to a recent statement from Russian President Vladimir Putin, who said in early February that the Russian strategic nuclear forces had been almost completely modernized. The naval component of the nation's nuclear deterrence triad had been almost 100% upgraded, he said. Russia is currently in possession of the largest and most diverse nuclear arsenal of any nation, Cotton said specifically pointing to Moscow's Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missiles and brand new submarines also capable of carrying nuclear weapons. According to the US general, Moscow is also expanding and modernizing its nuclear options beyond the classic nuclear triad. In particular, he drew senators' attention to the Kinzhal and Siakon hypersonic missiles, both of which he claimed could carry nuclear payloads. The U.S. strategic forces are currently operating in the face of challenges unlike anything America has ever encountered. Cotton warned, adding that the combined potentials of Russia and China, together with North Korea's and Iran's nuclear ambitions, add new layers of complexity to our strategic calculus. He urged senators to facilitate a rapid upgrade of the U.S.'s own arsenal, adding that it is absolutely critical we continue at speed with the modernization of our nuclear triad. Ukrainian Air Force reveals remaining A-50 aircraft in Russia. In Russia, fewer than eight long-range A-50 radar detection aircraft remain. One such aircraft was destroyed February the 23rd by the Ukrainian Defense Forces, reports Air Force spokesperson Yuri Inat during a televised marathon. The successes we have today, this extended arm, the ability to reach the enemy where they absolutely don't expect it, speak to the fact that the adversary will have fewer capabilities in this direction after losing the A-50, he said. The spokesperson noted that the destroyed aircraft had been modernized. As explained by Inat, the A-50 is essentially a radar that can observe and scan, detecting all aerial targets within a radius of 600 kilometers and identifying electronic warfare systems. We need to look at the intelligence data. The head of the main intelligence directorate, Kirill Budinov, said there were eight aircraft before this. Not all of them were operational and not all of them were modernized. So. There were only a few of them left, Inat added. On February the 23rd, Defense Forces of Ukraine reported that a Russian A-50 aircraft was shot down over the Sea of Azov. This is the second A-50 that the armed forces of Ukraine have destroyed since the beginning of the war. According to the main intelligence directorate, the A-50U is a new, modernized version of the aircraft. The cost of the destroyed aircraft is $350 million. The Russians used such an airborne command post for long-range radar detection, control and guidance for strikes against Ukraine with missiles from strategic aviation. UK helps Ukraine carry out attacks against the Russian Black Sea Fleet. The Kyiv's regime's attacks against the Russian Black Sea Fleet were directed by UK Special Services. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova told RTVI. It has been detected that the British, along with the US, acted as spotters, supplying the Kiev regime with coordinates of targets. As for the terrorist attacks against the Black Sea Fleet, they were literally conducted under the direction of British special services, she said. Zakharova made the remarks commenting on reports that UK's chief of the defence staff, Admiral Tony Radikin, played a significant role in developing Ukraine's military strategy in the Black Sea. The diplomat also said the Russian Foreign Ministry has repeatedly pointed to evidence of traces of British special services in anti-Russian activity and in the fighting in Ukraine as well as in the implementation of terrorist attacks. In general, the question that should be asked is not about Britain's involvement in separate episodes of the conflict in Ukraine, 
but about the unleashing and participation of London in the anti-Russian hybrid war, Zakharova said. Earlier, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the UK is helping Ukraine and is effectively directly involved in the conflict. Overall, it is no secret to anyone that the British are indeed providing various types of support to Ukraine, both with people on the ground and intelligence and so on and so forth. That is, they are practically directly involved in this conflict, the Kremlin official said, commenting on an article in The Times that the UK Defence Secretary allegedly was clandestinely helping Ukraine develop combat plans.